the tube. The heat is on for the Piccadilly line engineers. Good for making the toasted sandwiches on when you bring your lunch up. And there's a bomb scare at Cockfosters. I'm not happy with it. I'm just thinking about the current climate and, and, and what recent events in Iraq. London Underground 600 tube trains each travel over 70,000 miles every year. Bearing the weight of each 200 ton train is the track, over 500 miles of it. It needs constant attention and renewal. A massive engineering operation is beginning on the Piccadilly line track between Acton Town and Heathrow. It's been 30 years since this track has been renewed, and over the coming weekends, 4,000 tonnes of ballast, 1,600 sleepers and over 1,300 metres of new track will be put in place. They've suspended the service while the rails are taken out and replaced. Making sure it all runs to schedule is site engineer Neil Cormack. I'd be most put out if I was trying to get here through this weekend. I can understand the frustrations, but uh, the, ride, the, the ride on the train will be a lot better. That's the, the only consolation I can give people. The amount of work we have to do is, is a lot to be fitted in between the time the trains finish on a Friday evening to when they start again on a Monday morning. It's quite exhilarating. It's a constant go for, for the 12 hour shifts that we do. It's very rare you actually get a chance to sit down and have a cup of tea. Fimbling Rail, mate, is that all done and how long ago did it finish? It's a very tight window that we're working in. There's not a lot to play with. Not a lot at all. At the opposite end of the Piccadilly line, near Cockfosters, British Transport Police Officer Neil Stevenson can be called out to deal with any kind of problem. The call out we've got is a, a suspect bag that's been left on a train, on a Piccadilly line train. The train's been taken out of service and that train's in the uh, depot at Cock Fosters. The current terrorist threat climate is very high. We're going to go up and have a look at this item. Uh, we'll assess the situation and then uh, make a call as to, uh, as to what happens. Last year, over 600 bags were left unattended on underground trains. Safety comes first, especially because it's only two weeks since the bombing of four commuter trains in Madrid. Yeah, BX uh, Lima Foxtrot 13. Apparently this item on the train uh, is a rucksack. There has been one previous report of lost property, but that was a briefcase we received. Uh, we're just going to go and have a look at the uh, said item now uh, and get back to you in due course. It's been here for a good what, hour and 20 minutes. The train has been isolated at the far end of the sidings, as far away as possible from passengers and staff. We've been on the train. It is a rucksack. It's blue, blue and, uh, and red. I'm not happy with it. No, I'm just thinking about the current climate and, and, and what recent events in Iraq. The transport system is, is an ideal target. Neil is so unhappy with the bag that he asked for permission to completely close Cockfoster station while the situation is dealt with. Unattended bags cause an average of two station evacuations every day. Roughly the train's there. This is Cockfosters. Okay, yeah. well, it's myself and Mark yeah. Sadler here. Uh, Oakwood is down here, yeah? So the trains will be stopped there, no, turned the round. Uh, probably a few angry people, but we don't care about yeah, that at the yeah, moment. Joe this is more important. Joe and Cock Foster's yeah. is going to be, sh is, is going to be shut as well. I've made a request for our vehicle to attend. Uh, they've got specialist equipment on that vehicle where they can take x-rays. And then if they're not happy with it, then we can start evacuating and treating it as, as, a, as a, a serious matter and getting uh, bomb disposal people out. The threat of terrorism is something that all underground staff have to contend with on a daily basis. For station supervisor Paul Harper, it's just an occupational hazard. You worry about it because you don't know when you come to work whether you're going to go home at night now, at the moment. You're not sure. I mean, you know, as I say, we come in, but there's no guarantees we're going to go home if something does go wrong. 
Hopefully they won't do us, but you never know. It's, it's one of them things. I'll show you where the carriage doors are open. Funny past seven, it was found by a white uh, uh, and basically glue and red wax uh, sealed uh, by the interconnecting doors for second to the first carriage. I've been hearing things like the government saying it's not a roof, it's sort of it. They connect by that back, but then if anything, with wires shows, that may raise their levels of suspicion. But it's always in the back of your mind, this could be the real thing, but you just get on and do it. If they're not happy with it, then obviously this incident goes on to the next rung on the ladder, which would involve cordoning off the area and, and possibly calling out explosives officers, bomb disposal. The track replacement work at Heathrow is so far proceeding without a hitch. Uh, Gary, John Dog is back at the start, of the, the start of the job. If we walk right the way down to the east end of the site, we're still at the dig. We're just putting in the bottom ballast. Um, if you walk to the middle of the job, we're putting the sleepers in. If you to this end of the job where we are now, the rails are in, and then we'll just be putting the, uh, the assemblies together for the conductor rail. So it's, it's at various stages, but ahead, generally we're ahead. But welding 91 metre lengths of railway track together is no simple process. It's um, some aluminothermic process. Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> I haven't got a clue what it means, but it sounds really good. It fascinates me. I've been looking at them for 12 years and they still fascinate me. You're basically putting molten metal into it to form the joint, and then you have to crop it and grind it. So it just forms like a continuous rail. And was it an hour, Gary, in it for each weld? Good for making uh, toasty sandwiches on when you bring your lunch up. <laughs> It used to be a world he used to do that every week. Toasted sandwiches on the, on, the, on the leftovers, on the slag bowls. Bless him. At Cockfosters, the specialist X-ray unit have examined the suspected bomb. PC Neil Stevenson is anxiously awaiting their findings. Oh, right. Hey. It's a hooker pipe. Uh, a Middle Eastern smoking, you know, the hooker pipe, you know, a hubbly bubbly pipe. That, that's, what, that's what it is. It just seems ironic that it's, a, it's an item from the Middle East. Albeit harmless. In Northfields, it's an early start for Kevin Kinsella, the man in charge of the Heathrow Bus Replacement Service. I actually feel sorry for the customers on a weekend like this because the buses do take so much longer than the, um, the trains. Kevin has gathered together a fleet of 35 buses from as far away as the Isle of Wight to cover the suspended tube service from Heathrow to Acton Town. Any passengers expecting a smooth journey this weekend are quickly disappointed. All coaches to Heathrow, all four terminals. Yes, straight down to you. We didn't realise it was as bad as this. Very inconvenient, yeah. Trying to find places and ask people where to actually get your, your fare and tickets and everything, you know, so it's a bit tough as it to say the least, you know. We've got roughly 15 baggage handlers here. We've got about a dozen information staff. We've got half a dozen queue marshals. This operation is probably the biggest bus operation we have ever done on London Underground. But a big operation means the potential for big problems. And one has just landed Hello. right outside Acton Town Tube in the shape of uninvited roadworks. I'll tell you what the problem is. We've got a traffic order in Bolo Lane which prohibits stopping and waiting and parking. Um, Southern Electric contracting have turned up and in the middle of the length of road that we've got the traffic order on have uh, dropped anchor, put some vehicles into the middle of this and a JCB and are digging a hole in the road on temporary traffic lights. They say they've got permission but in fact they're breaching the traffic order which prohibits all stopping and waiting in Bolo Lane. Now that is going to mean that by two o'clock this afternoon the whole area is going to be at gridlock. 
but it's the ripple effect further out, which we've experienced before, that makes it an absolute pain in the whatever. What will happen is we will eventually run out of buses to run the service. Um, they'll all be stuck in traffic. Kevin must sort this problem out, or there'll be no way for the thousands of customers who use the line every weekend to get to and from Heathrow. At Acton Town, a handful of road workers are threatening to disrupt the biggest bus replacement service in London Underground's history. Kevin Kinsella has to handle the crisis. I'm standing with one of your gangs of chaps, and what we're trying to do is to ask for the traffic lights to be removed and for free flow to be established in Bolo Lane. OK, that's brilliant. Thank you for all your help. I'm very grateful. Cheers now. Thank you. Bye. Whew. Day off. Sorry, mate. Oh, no problem to us. No problem. Thank you very much. We're day off. With the obstruction removed, Kevin's bus service can run smoothly into the night as the track workers continue. But they're not the only ones working the night shift. A night on the tracks checking signal phones is just another part of the job for duty manager Andy Hogg. Anyway, it's uh, incident DMT across the road. Yeah. I hope you're not wanting to get some kit tonight. I've got a few uh, signal phones to check. I've got to go out on the track. Myself and my colleagues have, from time to time, got to access the track to go out and uh, check things have been done correctly. Voila! We've got to satisfy ourselves that when we send our drivers out there that everything works correctly and should they get into trouble, they've got phones that work. Right. This bit of kit is called a current rail indicator device, or a CRID. Um, I will use this to check that the traction current has gone off. The first time you do it, you step over it quite carefully when you realise there's a, a bare bit of metal there that if you touch it, it's going to just, uh, well, you're going to go up your flames. As the traction current is discharged, I'll see the three lights go off. So as soon as those three lights go out, we're away. It's now 20 past one. Traction current would normally have been turned off by now. But what we've got is an engineer's train moving through the area tonight. It's going to do some major work down at Baker Street. Yes, there is a sort of different breed of person that does night shift. I, I, I maintain we do it just to get out of the, uh, get away from the, the wife and kids and uh, get away from the, the, the passion that is asking the same question 20 times a day. But there we go, that's my, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. The deadline is looming for the Heathrow track replacement. With only three and a half hours until trains are set to run over the new track on Monday morning, all hands are needed to get the last work finished. You can't beat a shovel. <laughs> so I'll leave you to it in there, I won't stop you. So, another hour, yeah? Done. Sorted. We're looking to start clearing the track now. Once we've finished our works, we're just waiting on signals. Once they've tested out and it's all clear, then we can hand the track back and trains can run on this first thing in the morning. While the traction current has been off all weekend at Heathrow, Andy Hogg is waiting for the all clear before he goes onto the track. A lot of wildlife down the tunnels. A lot of foxes, a lot of badgers, rats. Uh, every ten feet there's a rat. Um, obviously, they're quite damp and dank down here, so rats quite like it. That's a new bit of kit. What are you doing there? Is it just taking the railheads here? Road testing. All right. Is this this new kit that's coming after uh, after Hammersmith? Wonderful. There's a new ultrasound. Uh, Gizmo, I think, is the best way of looking at it. It basically checks the entire track. If there's any hairline fractures, any hairline cracks in the track, this thing will pick it up. A few stations away, something altogether more cultural is happening. Liz O'Sullivan and Tamsin Dillon from the Underground's Platform for Art scheme have commissioned a series of new artworks. It's almost like Santa's elves in a way that we're able to come in during the night, put up something quite extraordinary. Um, for people to see in the morning when they come in. 
started in 1999, Platform for Art has found its natural home at Gloucester Road. It's a disused platform. The niches that you see here almost act as a natural theatre space for exhibiting work. It's quite nice being in the station when there aren't trains whizzing by all the time, and it's a great time to see the work, actually. Can I order a pizza, please? Oh, mate. Cheers, Tom. Yeah, that works. Human beings and trains can't fit down here together. So, um, we have got three, three hours, 20 minutes every night um, in which to do our work. Many a job that they do down here that you or I could do in a house and, you know, we'd do two or three person job. Down here you'll find there's 20 blokes simply to carry all the stuff on, to, to site on time and to get all the stuff off on time. Um, that's why track work is very expensive, unfortunately. Very little time, a lot of people. This year, £150 million will be spent on track replacement. With so much at stake, there's no room for error for Neil and his team. We want to get our wheels free in the next hour, which means I want everything off. Trolleys, uh, trains and uh, machines. All right, so how long are you going to be with that train? And if it's, I was going to say, if it's more than an hour, then it's the wrong answer. Well, it ain't going smooth, is it? Neil's got a problem. Over the weekend, 30 trains have been stranded at Northfield's depot. For trains to run on time tomorrow morning, the depot manager needs to start moving them. But for that, he needs traction current on. With Neil's men working on the track, this is not an option. The depot, they use this road to bring the trains in and shunt them around to get them ready for the, the traffic in the morning. So it does have the potential, as I said, to, uh, to affect the trains and running from this depot out east. The current has to be kept off if Neil's team are to work in safety, even if it means delaying the morning service. When you're rewiring a plug at home, you've got a one millimetre piece of wire which will power your kettle and it's like 240 volts, 13 amps. Just to give you some idea of the amount of current we've got going through these rails, this is the cable we have to use. We've got 630 volts, nearly 3,000 amps going through that. There is enough power going through these rails to move a 200 tonne train up to about 70 miles an hour. So you can imagine the amount of, uh, the amount of electricity that's going through it. So when someone touches this, it's uh, good night Vienna. If the work overruns and interrupts the morning service, there'll be financial penalties to pay for Neil's employer, Tube Lines. Neil has to convince the depot manager to give his team some valuable extra time. As long as we can get everyone right, if I leave one Boston yeah. and one shed open, yeah. that's a through road yeah. and it won't affect any yeah. no. any train movements. Oh, that'd be good yeah? yeah? So we plan for that, yeah? Okay. You happy with that? Yeah. I'm still smiling. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> have a job, job. We've always got a plan B and C. We have to have. It comes with experience in this business. You, you, can, you, can, you can put a plan on paper and it's usually changed before the ink is dry. Four AM Gloucester Road. The artworks are finally up and Liz and Tamsin can admire the fruits of their labour. It's quite um, funny to see a new set of work again, isn't it? Well, it's especially because it's so vastly different from the last. This yeah. is just so... It's gentle. I'm still trying to pick a favourite. I like the cool dude there. Once the lights come up, it's fantastic to see the works in place and uh, they do look really beautiful, actually. I'm keen to get home it's, and, and get, get to sleep. I'm pretty ready to hit the hay, yeah. In a male-dominated environment, Liz and Tamsin aren't the only women on the night shift. Olivia Newton-John, 
Who put her there and how long she's been there, I don't know, but there she is, smiling at you when you come round the bend. Well, there we know. Look, she's not doing any harm, so. Do the final walk through now. Do the handbag. With the first train due to run over the newly completed track in just over an hour's time, Neil must get his 100 strong team off site. Let me get clear of the track, please. Thank you very much. Get off. It's just a bit of a twitchy moment. And I'm getting twitchier by the moment. Is that them, them last two? Yeah. Can I walk any faster? No, no, we still got help and safety. I'll give him f***ing help and safety. <laughs> right, all clear. Well done, Pez. Well done, lads. <laughs> Woohoo! I thought we weren't going to do it. A uh, bit of hair and scaring with, uh, with a few signal people, but we got there in the end and we've done well. It's only taken three weekends for Neil and his team to completely replace the worn track ballast and sleepers between Acton Town and Heathrow. Bring it back, Next time, the trainee driver Terence handles a train for the first time. Okay, okay. that's where the breakfast is. There's your coast. Okay. And 60 year old Keith does it for the last. Hit me one more time. Ah, <sighs> love you.